This is a gorgeous little Terea taxifolia. I'm Connie Barlow. I'm the founder of Terea Guardians, and I took this video about five weeks ago. Uh, the day was November 6, 2018, and I'm doing a voiceover now five weeks later, December 15, 2018, and so that's the creek you hear in the background. That's Little Buck Creek. And this was taken at elevation about 3,800 feet, western North Carolina. The home of Russ Regnery, a Terea guardian, who started planting Tereas back in 2008. Now this one has been through four summers since it was planted in April 29, 2015. And you're seeing the surrounds here now because this is actually going to be a pretty tedious video. Uh, go watch some of our other videos if you want to uh, learn more about what's going on with the assisted migration of Terea taxifolia northward of its native range in Florida. This video is intended to accompany a new web page I put up on TereaGuardians.org website just this month, December 2018th, called Free Planting Terea Seeds Directly into Forest Habitats. Now, free planting is a term I've just been using to distinguish it's putting seeds directly into their ultimate destination, rewilding them in regrowth forest, ultimately where they're going to stay forever, should they exist. And its purpose is to really experiment with and document what the losses are if we use the cheapest, easiest means available to experiment with a assisted migration. And that is, in past years, what's been done. Seeds have been put into pots or they put into soil beds and protected from seed predators, generally rodents, by wire or being put in greenhouses, safe places. But ultimately, that means that the ultimate establishment in forest soil in the context in which they will spend their lives. And that also means the ability to uh, immediately form mycorrhizal associations with the fungi that's very important for conifers. Um, it's only available through this means, not in a soil bed that you're going to then transfer somewhere else, not in a pot that you're then going to carry somewhere, possibly drive somewhere, and then outplant. It's very labor intensive, and also the leaves will be um, accustomed to the kind of UV light that you find in wherever the pot was, was growing, whether a greenhouse or outdoors somewhere. And because the leaves last generally at least five years, uh, photosynthesizing maybe as long as seven or more, whatever UV protection the plant gives them when the leaves are grown, that's what they've got forever. And so for a variety of reasons, I've been encouraging Terea guardians to experiment with planting seeds directly into regrowth forest soils. We can learn a lot from this. Russ Regnery uh, was not the earliest, but one of the early ones. His uh, rural home was about equidistance between Highlands, Cashers, and Franklin, North Carolina. Uh, the first video in his series, that is, document his planting, these seeds here, I'll be showing clips of it, can be found in, in episode 12 of the Terea Guardians video series. And on that, you'll also see me documenting. That would have been April 29, 2015. I was also there documenting uh, how his 2008 planting of potted seedlings were doing out in the sun. But here, we're just going to be looking at free planting seeds. And we're really going to be taking a look at the details of how you look at these things and also their surrounds. My intent, my intent here, and in all the videos I do, is so that people with a grounding in natural history, also technical science, if, that, if, if they have that too, but basic natural history, might be able to look at these videos and make some interpretations that I'm not seeing right now. This is a new mode. It's not a scientific paper, but it's a kind of data, a photo-rich data. And that's why you'll see a lot of pictures of surrounds and also hear my comments 
on some of the tree species that I can identify and some other things that I might notice. So again, if you're looking for entertainment, stop. This is not it. This is a photo-rich data set. And what we're looking for is an understanding of how much do we have losses with no protection from rodents other than the depth that they're planted? And can they recover from herbivory and what kinds of her herbivory? And you're going to see that they do really, really well in recovering from herbivory here. So let's get started. And we hadn't moved any leaves around. Michael spotted it just like this. How high would you estimate that uh, new growth? Oh, the new growth? Good three inches. Okay, three, and how? Three and a half. Okay, how many radial buds coming out of the top? I think I see three. Yeah, three. Okay, and there's three laterals here, and then there's a lower lateral. Yeah, there's lower lateral. I think just one, but the initial burst would have been this. So it's got all its leaves, and Michael, I don't see any evidence that a rodent ever disturbed no, it. No, there's nothing. Yep. So one advantage of being between two creeks is that it's rodent proof. All right, three seeds down here. We found two thus far. Let's go look at the first one that we saw. So here it is again from a slightly different angle. And I hadn't realized, but only about eight feet away was where Michael first spotted the first one, too. Look at that. Let's go in close. Good sunlight this time of year. Good time to grow. Now, what's fascinating about this one, um, Michael, there, we didn't have to move any leaves away. It was like this. But this is a single year's growth. This is what they do when they first come up. And it's been three and a half years since we put in the seeds. This took a long time to emerge. The other one's already got a lateral and then another growth vertical and then a set of three laterals and next year it'll do another three laterals. And this one hasn't even done its first. So huge variation on when they come out. And again, the thing to look for is this really giant boulder uh, the old logging road or whatever is just a short ways up there and the creek splits right below the bridge there. Actually, there's no bridge. You just walk across. And this is the side of the creek you can see from here. But over on the other side here, you can't see it, there's an equal amount of water going over there. But this is the huge boulder or bedrock that you just look for amidst all these roadies. Here's some of the other things to look for here. This area is really open. This was great that we planted, that we planted here. So again, I'll take a close-up look. And again, there's roadies all through there. And uh, the old road that we walked coming from the other Tories uh, that are 10 years old and planted from potted seedlings are over there. We walked the road this way across the creek, came down by the boulder, and then here this is. And I'll go in close on both of them and get top downs. Top downs are really important. Okay, the top looks like it's going to put two laterals out next growing season, no terminal. But I, I was uh, probing around for basils, and I found, see to the right there, about an inch to the right, there's a green stem. And that was the first stem that came up. It was clipped off by some herbivore, and that gray, um, that gray little branch there I've got pointing right to the base but you can see where it got clipped off nipped off uh, and then there's that green area so 
is still alive there, photosynthesizing through the stem, I imagine. But look, it then got its act together, put up another stem, and this is its next attempt. So there is some kind of an herbivore back here. It could have been something bigger like a rabbit or a deer, who knows. But it didn't take that long for this seed to emerge. Probably emerged around the same time and probably look about the same had it not had the original stem eaten off so close to the ground. What a survivor. In case you're skeptical of my interpretation that an herbivore lopped off the initial stem, I'm going to show you two video sequences taken a year apart in northeast Alabama of another free planting experiment. And here you're going to see proof positive of how the very large seed of Tereotax folia is capable of once again putting out another new growth uh, without having to access the sun before running out of energy. First, I'm going to show you video excerpts of Russ Regnery himself planting seeds spring 2015 in this section of his property. I'm standing by the big boulder where he has planted the first seed of the three. This one never came up. But what you see him doing right now is he's planting the seed that did get clipped off. Notice the rubinia right behind him. And now a jump over to where he planted the final seed. This is the one that had no rodent damage at all. So now we jump to the other experiment, Northeast Alabama. Two sequences, starting with November 2017 and then November 2018. Here we go. The seed would have been right in there in the center. You'll see the rock in a moment. But what first went up was that one on the left. See, there's a little bit of green left. And since that didn't work, it sent up another one right here. And that's got a tip of green. So I'm going to do what I usually suggest not doing. And that is I'm going to move that rock a little bit down so that the tip of that new fleshy one will be exposed. Okay, I've just put the rock down and you can see the white fleshy one lower center, slightly green tip. And then the other one, green stem, that had been gnawed off. So possibly one or both of those might give it a try. I hope so. One year later, November 24th, 2018, well, well. What you see here is that this Tory new growth is uncharacteristically short. This is amazing. Remember, this is the rock where it was a roundabout and then a round again. And uh, it's very unusual for me if I've manipulated a rock. Um, it usually signifies disaster for the tree. I've elevated them before once I've seen it. Nope, you don't want to do that. But I did just the right thing and it had just enough energy to come out here and get some fabulous leaf showing. Yes, indeed, it is short. But enough to be able to get up and get its leaves out and photosynthesize. Let's return to the mountains of western North Carolina, Russ Regnery's place. Again, I was filming there November 6, 2018, and we are still in the patch where the initial three seeds were planted where the creek splits and creates an island. Here we are at the seed that had been initially clipped by some herbivore. Let's continue. So we'll take a look around, see what we've got around us here. And again, 
the other one is right see that curving stem there and there's a, oh, there's a rock over there and it's just in front of the rock let me see if I can get it in view a little bit here yep right in the center of the picture but what I want to show you here I think um, since we were here in the spring three and a half years ago uh, today is November 7th I think that was the buckeye I mentioned that in the center is Illyriodendron, and just beyond there I mentioned maples um, and a robinia. This is just so characteristic bark. This is a robinia. Uh, there's a rhododendron behind me, but this is this is what it looks like up up top here. And it's probably about one o'clock now, and there's the sun over there, so that's south facing. But you can see where the river is. It's full of roadies. Uh, what's exciting here is this is sweet shrub. You can tell, oh gosh, by the way it's uh, this opposite, absolutely opposite, uh, large angle bifurcation. It is a shrub, a subcanopy shrub, and it's one of my favorites. So we've got that here. Um, Here's a little tori in the center, and it's right by this robinia. Turn around. Here's Rhodey. I don't know what that is that fell, but a log. And, oh, here's a really good view. Um, this rock's going to be here for a while. Smilax right in front. Look at how old some of these Rhodeys are here. I wonder if this gets flooded on occasion. You know, how is it so open here? This is just uncharacteristically open. I wonder if this is another buckeye here, this double-stemmed. Um, oh, here's another way to know what to look for. That's some kind of a metal gutter or something along here. That's like an aluminum metal gutter. There's the creek right over there. And then up right through there is a house. So here's some of the leaves that we can see by here. Liriodendron. Um, here's one that's fairly young. They, they shed so quickly, they're so thin, they just rot right away, and the other ones are still here. The oaks, of course, still have their leaves. Here's a, here's a maple. Let me get this into the shade. Easier to see. Yep. Oh, we've got some little maples over there. Uh, oh. What is that? That big brown one. Is that some kind of a hickory or is, or is there a mag No, that's not a magnolia. Or, I don't know, probably a hickory. And then back around to the little toy. Straight down from the top. So the easiest way to find those two, again, this is looking south towards the sun. There's a creek over in there and a creek here, so it's like split into two. And see this gigantic roadie area? You got to get past that. I went down through it, but what makes the most sense is simply to follow this kind of open road across the creek here and then when you see that big boulder over there just follow that down oh yeah okay and to the right of the roadies I can't I can't really see the giant boulder there but what I can go in on is that aluminum see that that metal in there and on the other side of there is where I've marked it with two orange flags now. So baby Tories, free planted, may the forest be with you.
So the creek crossing is through there. There's the giant roadies. Here's the uh, old road we walked in from straight through there. When you get to the meadow, right in the corner there, you'll see a bunch of terreas. Uh, and we're going to walk up this old road now. And what I had shown on the video three and a half years ago uh, was watching him plant 12 seeds. I've written them out, so we'll see what we can find. And then there should be another 35 or so upslope where I have no idea where they are. But I've got orange flags with me in case we find any. Up the road bed here, I needed to look for a double stem lirio, but this is multi. I'll have to look, but on my way to get here, I came by and I admire this beautiful bark of the white pine, but look what I saw on it. It was moving when I saw it, it got scared. It's on the south facing side, so this is Warmoth, and it is a small swallowtail caterpillar. Wow, there it goes, it's gonna go again. Yeah, look at you. Go, dude. Yeah. May the forest be with you, too. I got to about right here, and I just yelled. Usually Michael's the one that sees them. I saw this, and my notes were good. I said a double stem lirio, about 10 feet from it, about 20 feet from upslope from the road. We chose this spot here. Um, actually, uh, we got a Lyria, big Liriodendrons on the right, and here we have a uh, mountain maple. Both of them have the right root fungus, so Russ is putting in a seed in that area. I'll go in close in a moment, but right now I just want to give the context. Good time of year to look for things. Well, there's a double stem lirio there, but here's the other one <laughs> that called my attention. And here's the old road down there. And back there is the meadow that's got the Tories in it. And back in this direction is the creek that had those two free planted seedlings. This is the first of 12 that we planted while I was here. It's the first one we've looked for from my notes. And by golly, here it is. To the top down. All right. Three laterals are going to come out next growing season. Leaves look healthy on it. They're not battered. It's beautiful. It's just, okay, so just two vertical times of growth. No basil. Oh, actually, while I'm laying here on the ground, it's a good place so I won't get dizzy. I'm going to do an upshot here of what we've got straight up. Okay, what would still have, can't be Liros, maples. Those would be maples that would still have their yellow leaves. But this is where the sun direction is over here, so it's going to be able to get sunlight in here. The sun's behind a, a little cloud, but it's mostly sunny. All right. Well, we found the first of the 12 that we looked for. I put an orange flag by it. Up there is a gray bench. Um, you can't see it from here, but I can. And there was one planted up slope from there we didn't see, and then there's been two. The old logging road is in front here. And then there were supposed to be two in this area, but we couldn't find any. But my notes, this one was really good. There aren't many rocks around visible. Oh, it says keep downslope, 
rock two foot wide with moss and it's planted two feet from the rock. Well, look at that. Michael found it right away when I read this to him. Beautiful. It doesn't look like rodents have ever gotten to it. I just see one little bud that looks like it'll do a lateral out of the top, but good photosynthetic capacity there. There's no, no indication that there was ever another stem there. So this is three and a half years after we planted the seeds. And all I can see for sure is one year's growth. They'll always go straight up. And then the first thing is usually a single lateral. No more than two. And then they'll go up again. So this is in the swale. Very easy to find because of this rock. And Michael is now downstream looking, or downslope, because the next thing I said, it's in the open, small stems all around with a baby maple. Well, that's a maple in the center, but that's bigger than baby. So I will go down and help him. But Tori, so glad to see you. May the forest be with you. Clinton's lilies here, a maple, oh, and a couple trilliums here too. Good dirt. Good dirt, all right. And look at these gorgeous trilliums growing right here. In my view, anywhere that's got trillium is definitely moist enough. I'm going to keep heading down this swale. It's a good rock to be able to see. by the rock. Yeah, you'll easily be able to find it again once I get this video up on YouTube. That'll be easy to check on. Oh, and Russ, you asked how long it takes. Mm -hmm. In general, we've been finding 18 months is when the first sign of germination happens, but where the, it's just the root going down. Mm -hmm. And so it's usually um, to the second fall. So these were the harvest of 2014. So... Probably not till fall 2016 will you see anything coming above the surface of the soil. Okay. Okay. They just, they, they've got a big seed, so they've got a lot of energy to be able to get that root down and make sure they've got good water before they bother to put anything up to the surface. Okay. Very good strategy. Okay, there's the boulder. And I just marked it with an orange flag there. And my notes read, open small stems around baby maple. Well, Michael looked and looked and couldn't find it. And as it turns out that, I'll show you in a moment, that the baby maple is quite big now. And here's what I found, and that's Michael helping us to see it. No basal, no sign of any herbivory. And Michael says uh, there's two buds on top. Those are two. So this is classic. One year growth coming up. And next year we're going to have two laterals coming out. This is very rich area. When I was here in the spring, there were all kinds of trilliums and all kinds of really, really signs of good, good, wonderful, rich forest. So we see we're by a little hickory here. And... Golly, there's a little oak, but here's what that uh, little maple turned into. And what's above that? Wow, is that a maple or a lirio? Anyway, here's what it looks like up, up above. And there's the sun to about two, almost two o'clock. So we're gonna continue, continue down. Okay, gone down slope. There's the cute little maple there. I don't know if you can see it in here, but I can see the orange uh, ribbon that I tied around a stem in the middle. Off here, there's a lirio that's lost bark on its uh, uphill side. So I said to, to, I made some notes, and I'm sure this is the rock. I remember this is what it looked like. 
in the video. It's barely above soil size and it's got moss on it. Um, and it said just uphill from there I planted a seed. So that seed either was a dud, never came up, or somebody ate it and that's the end of it. But I'm sure that this is a spot and there's nothing here. So we'll continue. Here's another landmark I'm sure of from my notes. This was an old fence post. I bet Juniperus because it's, it's really lasting. They last cedars, they're called. They last a long time. And my notes were exact telling me where to look. And here it is. Now this one is very different. I'll go in, in close from the side. But I, I've inspected it. And first of all, this one at the base is inclined, had to incline this way. I put my finger back. It started a couple inches to the left there and trended this way and then up. Um, but there's a spot you'll see from the side that a rodent ate the top off of. And so we've got a new top plus another one that slightly came out, not as a lateral, but as a possibility for going up into a radial. And this one put on a second, this would have been a basal, put on a second basal that also can go straight up if it needs to. So let's take a look. This is another threefer. There you can see the basal on the right, uh, on the left, to the left of the stem from this angle. I'm looking up slope. Uh, having a tough time seeing where that other one comes out. But maybe when I look close in my computer, I'll be able to see where the rodent herbivory happened. Oh, I think there it is. It's right in there, right in the center. And just a tiny little one coming out that's not a lateral off to the right there. But it could become a terminal had this one not. Wow. That one went up again. Very interesting growth. Okay, here's the context again by this old fence post. That's going to be here for a while. Can't miss it. This is looking back upslope the swale. There's a pretty big sized birch here, probably a gray birch. And here as I turn to the side, we're nearing the very edge of where the meadow is and gets mowed once a year. So that's the end of the notes I have on free planting. Uh, this is about the most successful I've had in actually finding sprouts from free planting. Now we're going to go back and do the detailed recording of 10th anniversary of uh, potted seedlings that were put in in that corner of the meadow. Oh, and this, by the way, back there, that's, I think that's Hogback Mountain. We're standing on the slope of Black Rock Mountain. Oh gosh, look at those beautiful oaks in there. I hear a pileated woodpecker. Is, is, am I hearing correct? Okay. Oh, here's another nice clump. And again, this looks like what I would call a birch. I wonder if it's a, a gray birch. There's a lot of things that are fairly, it's definitely not a beech, and it's not a buckeye. So I'm gonna... Oh yeah, I've, I can tell that. That one's easy. And this is obviously a robinia right there, right next to a liriodendron. And what would this vine be? Grape. Oh, grapevine, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so where are you going to put in another one here? One more here. Okay. Oh, this will be easy to see because it's got that weird looking stump. Yeah, and we've got, we're right here on an old fence line, so we have to be careful about the barbed wire. So okay. See right, right in the line of the fence line. Right in the line of the fence line, okay. Okay. 
Oh, and we have got... Just my finger down here, hope I don't get bit. <laughs> yes, I know, I, I was thinking about that a lot when I was doing, I've done a lot of free planting this time in Western North Carolina. But there's some lovely little maples right here mm -hmm. and right on the other side, and golly, this is what I'm holding on to right now, too. This is a maple, so we've definitely got the right fun fungus in here to form the symbiotic association and help our little Terea get what it needs. All right, so this is it for a wonderful April 29th Terea planting. A nice, perfectly rainy day for this. So Russ Regnery, thank you so much for helping to assist the migration of this ancient, ancient genus back up to the southern Appalachians from its Florida Peak Glacial Refuge. That's all for episode 28 in the Terea Guardians video series. For more detail and for ongoing updates, visit the Free Planting Terea Seeds webpage on the Terea Guardians website. Here's how to find it on the home page. Look for Seed Planting Experiments. May the forest be with you.